Hey, what's up, guys? Evil 94 back with another action figure review. Today, we're looking at the Hasbro GI Joe Classified series. This is the Special Missions Cobra Island. Got a sub name on this one, and this is the Wayne Beachhead Sneedon figure. So these are Target exclusives. Uh, they're actually getting released in stores right now. They're street dated, but some stores are actually putting it on pegs and selling it. Um, and I was lucky enough to find it at my local Target. Anyways, let's get to the review. So we have uh, Joe Ranger here, Beachhead, on the front uh, with all his accessories. We have nice side art on the side. And then on the back side, a different image. We don't have that poster um, that had all the characters on there. We just have Cobra Island all mapped out. So very curious to see that. And then here's the other side. So without further ado, let's get it cracked open. So here we have Beachhead out of the box. And he comes packed in with a few accessories and weapons just like all the other Joes have been. Overall, the figure looks pretty nice. And he comes with a hat, which I attached. So I guess that counts as an accessory. But I am digging how the Hasbro is making these removable hats. They're not just sculpting it. They did that with Gung Ho. Um, and it's cool that you can just remove it and it simply sits on there uh, just fine. So I appreciate that they're not sculpting it. They're giving us the option to put it on or, put it, or take it off. So uh, first we'll just take a closer look at the figure, then we'll run through the accessories. So here's a close look at Beachhead. And overall the sculpt came out very nice. The face is painted well. The texture of the sculpt on the head, on the clothing I guess I should say over the body, looks well. Appreciate that they painted the vest brown here, it's not all black. Just one color added in there makes all the difference. They could have added some more, but I'll take what I can get at this point. We got some um, red and blue there for his shoulder. And on the back side, we get some more paint. So I appreciate the paint. You can see how well the sculpt is. Going down to the legs, we get these straps here. Which this one, which is a holster for his pistol, has some red paint. I'll take that. Some glossy black paint for the knee. Then we get light or I should say dark green for the shin guards there. If you want to add the hat, we can do that. And there you go. You see the paint job, pretty clean there. So since we're showing it, there's the first accessory that he comes with, is the hat, so we'll show it one more time. Came out very well. He also does come with a backpack here, similar to what Duke came with, but this time it's all black. See, this is what this is what I'm talking about. No paint job here. We got some arrows here. We got, it looks like a scope. It looks like a, uh, a rocket for a rocket launcher. Just all black. If they could paint that, that'd be great. Um, going onto the back there, you can see how you can peg it in. So he's got a peg hole on his back, so now you can have him holster it on his back, or wear his backpack. And now we move on to his weapons. And this is a little underwhelming. Again, it's just all green. To me, this is crazy. I feel like they should be detailing the weapons as nice as these sculpts are. They should be detailing it and not just simply making it a green piece of plastic. They detailed the weapon on Duke. I don't see why they don't detail the weapon here on Beachhead. You get a crossbow. That's all green as well. I mean, the string is green. The actual crossbow is green. The grip is green. Everything's all green. We get a knife. The blade is all green along with the the handle everything's just green i don't i don't like this at all i don't like when they don't paint weapons the pistol's all green so all of his weapons are all solid one solid color which to me is is not great in my opinion now the figure itself is awesome you can tell that they went ahead and used all the paints or all the budget for the paint on the figure, which I would prefer them to do, so I appreciate that. You can see they painted the pouch on the shoulder. They painted his sleeve here. Even inside underneath the vest, stuff you don't see is painted as well. And speaking of the vest, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be removable unless you cut it open just like uh, Roadblock. The first release of Roadblock on Series 1, that one didn't have a way of removing the vest. Uh, just like this one here, so you might have to cut it open if you really want him to take off that vest. Now he can hold the weapons just fine, which is always great. So there's uh, the pistol in his right hand. And just so you can get a comparison, there is Duke's pistol in his hand. He can also hold his knife just fine. And then here he is holding 
the crossbow, which actually doesn't come apart like Scarlet's crossbow does. Scarlet's crossbow would come apart. This one's just one solid piece here. So overall, you can hold it just fine. I just really hate the green. I'll repeat that over and over as long as I have to at this point. Just look at this. Tell me how they promote the weapon with blue, black barrel, and green scope. Also on the front here, you can see the weapon. Clearly has multiple colors. And you give us this. So his head is actually on a ball jointed hinge, which is interesting because uh, he's got a separate neck piece. Lately, Hasbro's been doing this separate neck piece, but only having a barbell, um, ball jointed peg. I don't know, I call it a ball jointed peg, but this is the ball jointed hinge. So now we have a lot more range, and you can see how long the peg is. It's not just the ball, it's got some length to it. So he can look up a ton, and he can look down a ton. He can also do a little bit of that head tilt and left and right and the neck you can just see how the neck works there so the articulation on these gi joes lately have been better than marvel legends i must say uh, the arms are going to go all the way up and down in and out we get butterfly joints not that it's really um going to do anything because of the vest hindering it you're not really going to get them to cross over but it's there it's something um, you can get them to go further back so yeah, there's that, but definitely it is there. We have bicep swivels, we have double jointed elbows, swivel at the wrist with a regular hinge on that wrist, and this one also has a, no, this one has a side hinge. So side hinge for the left hand and a regular hinge for the right. A torso probably would have had an ab crunch, it probably is there, yeah, it is there. Um, not that you're gonna notice it though, because of that vest, so. You can still kind of move it around. We have a ball joint for the waist. So it's kind of like a lower diaphragm joint, so we get this movement here. So pretty good range, forward and back, and a swivel. The legs drop down. Again, I am saying this. G.I. Yeah, Joe lately have been having much better articulation than, than Legends. Um, so he can kick forward quite a bit. The other leg as well. In and out, you can almost do a full split. We have thigh swivels double jointed knees, we have a boot cut shin swivel, a hinge at that ankle, and a rocker as well. So overall, I am happy with the articulation. So I guess we gotta keep that into consideration when we're, we're when I'm complaining about unpainted guns. We do get new sculpts here. Although the legs are the Duke legs, it's still a new sculpt, it's still a new line. Um, we're still, you know, we're getting new sculpts, we're getting articulation here and painted uh, figure but still hopefully they can find somehow maybe if we support the line enough and they get more money out of it they can start painting these darn guns because i i can't have this and before i move into the height comparisons section i, I want to show that you can holster some weapons here we have the knife being able to holster there on his leg the pistol you can put it on his side here just like that similar to duke and that is about it. You can't really holster the assault rifle or the bow and arrow. I mean, the crossbow, sorry. <laughs> can't really holster that. So you're going to have to hold both of these or none of them if you, if you wish. So I'll go ahead and throw in a few comparisons here. So from Series 1, I'll throw in Duke. So these two look great together. And they are using the same legs. The upper torsos are obviously different. And the boots or the feet are the same as well. I think the hands are also the same. Aside from that, everything else is different. Even the gun holster is different there even though they have the same pistol. And also from series one we have snake eyes. Snake eyes also suffered from a few uh, unpainted areas there like those grenades are all black along with the pouch. So here and there Hasbro would do it but overall um, they've been doing pretty decent when it comes to the actual figure itself. So there's a look at these two next to each other. Next up from series two, we have Cobra Commander. This one's beautifully painted. A great example of when they actually do paint the figures and every little bit that they can, like the pins and the buttons there, the chain link, the, uh, the shoulder piece there, the gauntlets, or I guess the forearm, not the gauntlet, sorry. Uh, the forearm is painted nicely. Overall, the figure got more love than the accessories that he received. So for my random section of the comparisons, I'm going to start it with the SH Figure Arts Captain Ginyu. This beautiful figure I just recently reviewed, just recently released by 
uh, Bandai Tamashi, so check out that review if you're a Dragon Ball Z fan. This is how he scales next to a Star Wars The Black Series figure. This is Captain Rex. And next to a Marvel Legend, we have Agent Coulson. In regards to this being a potential army builder for like, I don't know, Marvel Legends or something else, I don't know, maybe you can pull it off. He's always going to be known as Beachhead. Um, he's always going to be known as the G.I. Joe, so if maybe you can swap the head with another army dude's head and you can just have an army of soldiers fighting, I don't know, Captain America or fighting along with Captain America or, I don't know. People always get creative when it comes to displaying and, and photography, so I'm interested to see if people actually use this to army build. So I am not a G.I. Joe expert, um, nor am I the biggest G.I. Joe fan, but I'm still um, buying these figures because they are that good they're really well done i think they look great and honestly i think hasbro's doing a pretty good job so far now from what i understand uh, he only wears the hat when he is not on a mission not out and about um, when he's at the base when he's instructing when he is uh, training people pretty much uh, he's a instructor or commando and all that so he's got to show his position or his rank but when he's out and about on missions he definitely takes it off and looks like this so you have two versions of him and you can display him as you wish so that pretty much wraps up my review of the hasbro gi joe classified target exclusive beachhead figure this figure sold out in mere seconds on the website when they put it up for pre-order but as you can see you will have the opportunity to find them in stores so hopefully they will be plentiful for people to find and get their hands on. Overall, I really like this figure. I think fans of Beachhead and fans of G.I. Joe are gonna love this figure as well. And I think overall the G.I. Joe line is being pretty successful so far. Let me know your thoughts down below. Leave a like, and as always, have a great day. Bye. That's crispy.